what is up guys this is you to back with another video on the redmi k20 pro and today in this video i'm going to be showing you the blitz rom this blitz rom is official build version 14.5 based on android 11 the build date here is 28th july 2021 and this build is of course included with g apps and the file size is about 1.8 gb that's because this build is based on os's vendor I will put all the important links in the description box below if you want to see the flashing guide. Here we have the Blizzrom version as version 14.5 and you can see the changelog if you tap here. The maintainer's name is Taran. The Blitz device shows as Raphael of course because this is Redmi K20 Pro. And we have the build date of 28 July 2021 and the SLNX status shows as enforcing. In the Android version of course this ROM is based on Android 11 as you are noticing and the security patch is latest of July 5th 2021. The Google Play system update shows as 11 and we have the stock kernel as the Soviet star kernel pretty much same with all the OSS ROMs recently and inside system we have the Bliss updater and from here you can check for updates and it shows this Bliss ROMs 14.5 here. Let me go back to the front camera settings here we have the front camera calibration as well and you can calibrate the front camera with this kind of settings there we have the front camera opening sound effects. Then we have the front camera raise dialog and the front camera LED disabling option. The stock keyboard here is Gboard because this ROM comes with G apps included again. So right now let me just show you the home screen. This is how the home screen looks like and yeah the whole UI is pretty much smooth. I did not face any kind of issues or something over here. Everything all over the UI is buttery smooth. Let me actually show you the home screen settings. These are the settings that you will get. We have the allow edit option, then the notification dots, add app icons to the home screen and the screen rotation. Show Google app is there and hidden and protected app is there. So if you want to go into that, let me actually show you. Here you will get the option to actually lock any particular apps and you can hide them from the launcher itself. So that is cool. But there is also app lock which I'm using over here. But I have a complaint with that. I will talk about that later. But first let me show you. We have this show icon labels on desktop, show icon labels in drawer and the icon labels in landscape mode also. But there is no option to actually hide this particular panel. The suggestions panel just appears over there in the app drawer. And one more thing is that you can search for any particular app just like this. As you can see, you can just type it and you can search for any particular app. And here you can double tap anywhere in the home screen to get the phone to sleep. And yes, this is totally working fine. Double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen is just awesome. This is the default wallpaper that you will get in this Bliss ROM which says Team Bliss right here. To the left of the home screen, again, we have the Google's Discover page. Swiping down gets you to the quick settings panel and again, swiping up gets you to the app drawer and the widgets here are working totally fine. Let me show you the quick settings panel now. This is how it looks like. You can edit and add multiple toggles. As you can see, there are a plethora of quick toggles that you can edit and add. I have added the battery saver, the dark theme, and the screen recording is also there. We have this device audio and the microphone audio recording at the same time. And we have the hotspot, then the do not disturb, the data saver option, and the always on display, you can have it like off or on from right here. And we have the heads up, then the night light, then the nearby share. Also, we have this sound toggle. So if you tap and hold on this sound toggle, you will get this volume panel over here as you can see and you can also enable the live captions from here you can put the phone into vibrate or silent mode from here and the resetting or the anti flicker mode is also there and there is also this high brightness mode so for some reason if you want to enable that you can definitely do that from here and here it shows this brightness slider on the quick settings panel and we have this auto brightness toggle option right here you have the settings then the edit icon and the wi-fi kind of usage shows up over here here it shows the network on the top right and the phone status like if it's muted it will show phone muted then the time on the left and we have the battery status and how long the phone will last with the battery it has left now let me jump into the settings this is how the settings panel looks like now here are a couple of bugs that i should mention quickly wi-fi kind of panel by default is like in the background of this search settings option which looks a little bit weird in my opinion because i have to drag it every time whenever i go into the settings because otherwise it just looks weird let me actually demonstrate that again let me go into the settings. As you can see again, it is behind this search settings. So yeah, it is 100 friendly, but definitely it feels a little weird to scroll it down every time whenever I'm going into the settings. Now talking about the stock dialer, this is how it looks like the in-call UI I mean, and there is no call recording option over here, but vault e-calling is working totally fine. Even with the Bluetooth device, as you are noticing right now, I'm connected with that, the vault e-calling and stuff, everything is working fine. But again, no call recording option over here. One really cool thing about this ROM is that it comes with this Google camera by default, which also has this lens switching options. So right now I am on the wide angle lens. And if I switch to the 2X, 
So as you can see right now, I'm on the 2x telephoto lens and yes, you can switch to the night side and with night side, the pictures quality will be amazing. And we have also the portrait mode working even if you want to switch the front camera, let me actually show you. As you can see, the front camera is working fine as well. By the way, I'm shooting this video with the Redmi Note 10 Pro guys again. And here we have the video settings and the more settings. Of course, this is a great Google camera. If I show you the info, as you can see, this is the Gcam 7.3 Boreal version 16 over here, present by default. Talking about the recent channel, this is how it looks like. We have this like split screen option, pin option, and the freeform option if you tap here. And we can see the screenshot, then the force close and the share screen option over here. Here I have also installed the ANX camera. If you haven't seen the ANX camera flashing guide, here is a card for you or you can find it in the description. This is the version 190R again. And with that, the wide angle lens, the telephoto 2X lens is working fine. And even in the video settings, you can get up to 4K 60fps option. Let me actually show you even the front camera is working fine as you are noticing. And by the way, I'm shooting this video with the Redmi Note 10 Pro again in 4K. So yeah. And here also we have the pro mode and stuff, but I'll show you how I got this pro video mode on the Redmi K20 Pro in a different video, maybe. So yeah, and we also have this front and back mode because I have added that again with a different kind of feature. So yeah, there are a lot of options with this ANX camera that you can tweak ANX camera and it is working fine, except for the portrait mode again, because portrait mode is broken on the Redmi K20 Pro, but on the Redmi Note 10 Pro, the portrait mode with the version 1NTR ANX camera is working super fine. Jumping into the settings, we have this Blissify settings. Here you get all the customizations. And again, this ROM has amazing amount of customizations, but there are some that does not work. Let me actually explain. We have the clock settings here. Everything works and you can customize however you want to. Traffic indicator is there. And again, you can customize that. Battery charging light is there. And we have the serious about battery settings. And here is the bug. Like if I set this battery percentage to next to the icon, as you are noticing, it just doesn't show the icon next to it. So that's how it is in the battery status. We do not simply have the next to the icon working, at least as of this build, it doesn't work. So I have to go with this inside the icon feature or I can go with this hidden feature, of course. And we have the battery icon styles changing option. We have this like icon portrait, circle, dotted circle, filled circle, etc. But again, there is no option to actually have the next to the icon working right here. So that's how it is. And we do have the system icons. We have the headset, Bluetooth, etc. icons over here. List logo, if you want to enable that. Then the show 4G instead of LTE, roaming indicator, and the show data disabled icon is there, mobile data type icon. And you can also adjust the wall icons over here, like whatever wall icon you need. You can choose that from here. Also, you can enable the VO Wi-Fi icon. Then you can customize the VO Wi-Fi icon, whichever VO Wi-Fi icon you need. Then we have the notification count as well. We have the brightness slider. So if I adjust the brightness just like this, just by sliding a finger on the status bar, as you're noticing, it is adjusting the brightness of the screen. So this feature works flawlessly, no issues whatsoever. And we also have the carrier label option over here. You can customize that if you want to. Now let me switch to the quick settings panel. Here we have the show brightness slider. Then we have the show tiles title and you can customize the column and row numbers. Then the tint quick settings option is there. You have the accent color and the oxygen OS and the Android 12 styles. So you can go with whatever tint you like in the quick setting panel. And we have the vibrant on toggle touch. Then we have the battery percentage icons and stuff. Next to the icon is there and the battery estimates is there as well. Let me go into the navigation. Here we have the system navigation gestures. Now we have the quickly open camera and the activate the torch option. With that, you can have the power button long press to toggle torch to long press or the double press. So yeah and you have the system navigation gestures. In the settings, we have the gesture bar length and the gesture bar radius customization. And I did change everything. So that's why you're seeing this like long and thick pill bar over here. And we also have the haptic feedback option. If you want to enable that, we have the two and three button navigation as well here. And we have the power menu kind of customization. Three finger screenshot gesture is there. So let me actually show you. This actually has the long screenshot, edit, share, and delete option. And all of them are accessible. They have no issues. Long screenshot works super fine here. No issues with that. Pixel animation is there. Then the layout, you can change invert. The layout option is there if you're using two or three button navigations. Now in the lock screen settings, we have the FOD kind of customization or the fingerprint icon changing options. We get these many icons. We also have this Octavio OS icon and much more options as you are noticing. And there is the animations. We have the Cyberpunk 2077 animation and the Xiaomi kind of fingerprint scanner animation. This is just the unlocking animation. You can customize it. You get plethora of options over here. You can see and the animated FOD icon option is there. So let me actually show you whenever I double tap, as you're noticing, it brings the FOD with this kind of animation. And whenever I tap it, it unlocks the 
like device with the fingerprint scanner super fine the fingerprint scanner experience over here is very accurate no problems at all now we have the fingerprint pressed color by default it is set to white but you can change it if you want to screen of fingerprint option is there but let me tell you there is no option for the always unlock with the fingerprint scanner here which is kind of disappointing and we have the music visualizer then the music control and stuff then double tap to sleep in the lock screen charging info shows up in the lock screen then the volume rocker wake is there and the background blur level for the lock screen wallpaper is there disable power menu on lock screen is there and we have the reorient option now if you switch to the system we have these themes now here you can get to choose the accent colors of course by default you get a cyan kind of color but i am using this like dark kind of purple over here like this deep purple over here so yeah and you get pretty much plethora of customizations for the accent colors as you are noticing and again this primary color is the background color over here so if you are setting it to bliss black or the device default if you switch to dark theme it will be completely amulet dark so that's cool and we have these one plus dark charcoal black etc like gray greenish kind of background you can get and we have the icon shapes changing option these are the icon shapes that you get then the status bar icon you can also change over here then we have individually like font changing option over here as you are noticing plethora of fonts that you get so like just huge amount of customization in terms of fonts it just doesn't end the options are just too much as you are noticing settings dash mode icon to colorful oxygen is 18 or a11 or android 11 then the system theme you can have it on stock theme or solarized dark pitch black etc then we have the switch style you can actually change the toggle styles from here you can have the android s style toggles if you want to then you can individually change the Wi-Fi icons as you can see. So you can change it to Xperia, ZigZag, etc. And you can also change the signal icons over here. So again, huge amount of customization. Even the nav bar style you can change from here. So just notice how many customizations are there. Now let me show you the quick setting tile styles and you get these kind of quick setting tiles. You can have it on Oxygen OS or divided circles, square kill, etc. options. And we have the G visual mod here. Then you can choose the rounded corners and stuff from here. And the clock styles, lot of clock options, but we cannot simply find the Android H style or the Android 12 style lock screen clock here. You do get the one plus minimal, one plus analog, or the binary kind of clock and the custom num it says over here. And the sneaky, then the S funny one I have been using. You also get the fluid options like fluid version one and version two, both are there. Oxygen OS clock is there, Octave US clock is there. This clock Artino is there and we have this IDE clocks, but again, the Android S style clock is just simply missing, which is a bummer as of right now because all of the ROMs are coming with that clock in my opinion. We have the animations, you can like change the whole UI animation pretty much from here. As you can see the wallpaper intra open animation etc. And the list view animation you can change and the screen of animation you can change it too. So yeah, whole UI animation you can change. And it has this one UI settings action bar over here and the volume panel you can also change to these many options. By default, the stock AOSP panel looks like this. And the show app volume option is there. Heads up, you can enable or disable from here. Vibrate on connect, call waiting and disconnect. Three options are there for in-call vibrations. And the status bar lyric option is there. Then the double tap to sleep on the status bar is there, I guess. And we have the click to take personal screenshot is there. Then we can adjust the screenshot quality if you want to. Then we have the fingerprint authentication, vibration, two step icon and the key lab button is there. So that's all the customization that you get here. Now in the battery settings, this is how it looks like. We have this percentage showing up over here and it shows this kind of animation really sorry about the background noise guys of the dog and here we have the battery kind of full usage as you can see i have used this rom for quite a while now and i would say the battery life is decent you can get up to six plus hours of screen on time over here pretty much so yeah this is a oasis vendor based rom so battery life will not be the best but yeah again you can get six plus hours of screen on time here and the fast charging also works fine we also get the thermal profiles and you can change the thermal profiles to this default benchmark browser camera dialer gaming streaming etc whatever you need and the battery saver adaptive battery is there then the smart charging smart cutoff is there here we get the screen on time again i have got about five hours of screen on time with 40 percent juice left almost so yeah and the design battery capacity the current battery capacity and the battery temperature also shows up over here but it doesn't show the charging cycle for some reason i do not know why the charging cycle does not show up usually with other roms when you get to see this kind of battery health kind of things you get to see the charging cycle as well but here you do not simply have the charging cycle 
In the display settings, this is how it looks like. We have this custom display settings, you get the DC dimming as well. We have the high brightness mode here. Then we have the brightness level and the dark theme options are there. And you can schedule it if you want to. Then the night light, adaptive or auto brightness is there. In the styles and wallpapers, we also get this grid option as you can see. Up to six by six grid we have. Then in the clocks again, we get those lock screen clocks. Let me go back. We have the color set to boosted by default. Then the font size, display size, DPI, etc. Changing option is there. In the lock screen, we get the always show time and info. That is for the always on display again. Then we have the double tap to wake. Then the prevent accidental wake up. Enable blurs option and the ambient display options are there. You can customize it if you want to. In the sound settings, we get this media call, etc. Volume and we have the ringtone vibration pattern changing option, the ringtone changing option as well. And the dial pattern, screen locking sound, charging sound, charging vibration, everything is there. But let me tell you, there is no me audio detect. There is Moto Audio over here. So if you open it, as you can see, I do have Moto Audio. So right now I can just like use this Moto Audio with the smart audio music, whatever headset I connect or whatever Bluetooth speaker or even with the like loudspeaker of this device, I can use this Moto Audio and the sound quality via the headphone jack and even Bluetooth as well is just amazing. It is plenty loud and it has a lot of clarity in it. I would say so the sound quality is not a problem even though it doesn't have a me audio direct in the sound settings and we also have this clear speaker option you can clear your speakers if it had some dust or something and in the security settings if you go into the like screen locking settings we have this lock screen timeout over here and the film scanner again is plenty fast it's not a problem at all and here let me actually set up the face unlock so i did complete the setup of the face unlock right now i'm just gonna double tap over here and if i swipe up as you can see, it is unlocking fine with the face unlock. Let me try one more time. As you can see again, face unlock is working super fine. No issues whatsoever. Even when I'm swiping up, it unlocks with the like front camera. No issues whatsoever with the face unlock here. Now this app lock is there. Let me tell you, you can just tap on any app and that will be locked. And here you can hide their notification and you have this lock app after instantly 15 seconds, etc. options are there. But this ROM actually has that old kind of app locking bug where you get, if you get a notification from a particular app, if you tap on the notification from the status bar, it just straight up goes into the app. It has that particular bug. It doesn't show you the app locker kind of like UI over there. It just straight up directs you to the app. That bug is still there. So it might be a privacy issue if you are getting some like notifications from a particular app that you have locked. What's the point of that? If it opens already, if you tap on it, so that's very weird. But here, whenever you're opening that particular app from the app drawer or the home screen or the launcher itself, as you can see, it shows this like kind of window and it unlocks the app with the film, which kind of super fine. But again, the app locking bug is there. Also saying, okay, Google does bring you the Google assistant. As you can see, let me try one more time. Hey, Google. As you can see again, Google Assistant is working fine. By the way, this is how the power menu looks like. You have smart home controls and if you tap on advanced, you can directly reboot to recovery or system UI or the bootloader or you can just restart the device normally. It passes the safety net test right out of the box, but I do have Magisk installed and with Magisk guide, I can get safety net passed over here. So banking apps is not a problem here. My DRM certification shows as L3 because I have broken it permanently. But if you have intact DRM certification, which shows L1 in MIUI, like MIUI 1204, if you have DRM certification L1, here you will also get L1 certification if you have not broken your white vein certificate. This is how the Google Photos backup and sync looks like over here. And you do get the upload size changing option. Here you get the storage server express and the original quality. So you do get the like free kind of pixel backup over here. Here are the Android and Geekbench score of this ROM. And again, a CPU stress test of this particular build. So what do I think about the Steam Bliss ROM or the Bliss ROM overall? I would say, yes, it is a great option, but it still has the bugs like the battery percentage bug. And we still do have the app lock kind of bug where you just tap on the app's notification. It just opens the app straight up, even though you have that app particularly locked. So those kind of bugs are still there. So yeah, this is not a great experience, I would say, but it has a lot of customizations here. But I would say as of right now, if you wanna try your OS as vendor based ROM, just try the Evolution X. That will be my personal opinion. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.